Hello, everybody. If you are watching, you are watching the Mary and Joe show for a podcast with some eclecticness. And there's several hosts on this show and several mass media. If you are listening, found this link. Welcome. It is the Miss Chronic Chronicles, Rachel Raw Truth, and the Mary and Joe show with my co hosts, two very awesome people, Marie Taro 504. And Good Kim evening. Kiru. Hello, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Tonight, we're going to be taking you guys on the Wild West journey. You think you know what the Wild West is. From the 90s, we think the Wild West is Cali and all the music, but no, no. The Wild West goes way deeper. And where I live has such a rich history. Um, or a couple of years ago, I did some research on the town of Parachute, Grand Valley, Battle at Mesa. These are all the same spot, believe it or not, in the western slope of Colorado. And with finding the history and the roots of many years that I lived here, I found a PDF that was quite incredible as it entails over 173 slides describing in very big detail. Let me open up this real quick. And if you guys can't see it, I'm very sorry. I'm going to do the best I can to um, make it available to see. Let's see, view tab. So um, in 1970, I think it was, is when this was initially published. Hold on one second. We got a sensitive computer tonight here. Hold on. Turn on the mic. <laughs> there we go. All right, there we go. So, yeah, I think this was done in... That was published in 1970? I believe so. Let me see here. 1973. And it was done by one of the locals, um, Murray, the Murray family, if you see it, by Erlane. And so this particular document, I have the um, rights to at least share it with you guys with fair use, but I do not have the rights to read word by word and take no breaks and to not have any commentary in between. So obviously if you guys are listening, it's kind of a treat. It's like a story time episodes docu-series with a podcast twist here. So um, obviously Marie and uh, Tuki are into history. We're very into um, the little nitty gritty that we don't understand or know, but being the town that I'm in, being the recent events of Ghost on Camera, being the um, strange events many years ago that brought me on this journey as I will be touching, um, and so will the rest of my lovely co-hosts, and their own circumstances and spiritual situations that like open doorways. And we're like, oh my gosh, let me research that. And yep. it just opened the floodgates. <laughs> so... Um, we can put it like in the shortest context that I am really feeling honored to be the one that is the voice here for Parachute Battle at Mesa and all the locals that I'm sure we'll be seeing this and future locals. Um, because what I'm going to do is gather all of the things that we need to understand from this document, along with the history and the rich roots that are Colorado and especially Western Colorado, because even today, as someone who grew up in Denver and a little bit in this area when I was in my middle school days, I was not aware, even only until today, that the Colorado River wasn't the Colorado River. Um, it was a man-made structure that we, the Western Slope, should be very proud of, but it also was a huge conspiracy and... Um, in so many words this still everybody is an explicit show so if you don't like cursing and things like that just don't listen because <laughs> we're gonna probably a curse of sailors sailors off. Off. right a bunch of louisiana sailors up in here and you know i'm a mountain mama with a louisiana twist so can't help it but uh it's pretty incredible to see what kind of ruggedness and corruption like the brothels that existed all through this canyon um along with just the homesteaders who fought for their land. Like it literally was a reality that at some point in this episode, I will share with you guys how the Indians quite literally would go away in the winter when it would get cold about this time, they'd start taking their harvest and leaving and moving and not church, you know, tearing up the soil or whatever. And so, then go ahead. 
So just, Go ahead. <clears throat> just think in advance, how advanced were these Indians, if we think about it, that they knew how to do the planting Native there? Americans. Right. Well, you know, which we'll, we'll right. cover on we'll cover on further when we get yep. to the water sourcing. Right. I mean, it's incredible feats of uh and I think that I think I read it was over 8,000 years. These people in my area are one of the last of the Indians that still have family in this state. That oh, says a lot. That's a heartbreaking statement. But you've got still some that have had 8,000 years. We're talking old history. Like we always, Wait, Oh, my God. 8, Let's talk about that. 8,000 years. Right. Dinosaurs. So, wait. And the Mayans. <laughs> before were, Egypt, like, built their right. pyramids. 8,000. They have, they, have, they have proof in the caves in Glenwood, we will talk about in a future episode, that there are old <laughs> tools of metal that do not exist in this country, which means oh, the migration. Really? Yes. And were they're they, in crystal I caves. I if they were, like, chisels or... Yeah, no, they were literally bronze and, and go like, it was, like, these migrators... Yeah. Who were they? But their tools were put in the cave. Their body was never found. There's so many stories oh, we're going to wow. talk about. Maybe they, yes. That, that was and they're crystal cave. caves. Like that, that's where they put their things. Like, who knows? It was. Like, whenever I leave my job site, I, I put my tools in, in my in my chest, you know, and I, I leave the site. Let me, it's um, interesting. Let me just let the listeners know, if you don't know about Western Colorado, you, you will by the end of this episode, and so will I. <laughs> Not this episode, but all of them. The docuseries in the audio pod podcast that I'll be releasing here. So I'm not the best reader. Don't hate, <laughs> but I absolutely want to put my, can I read into some this. of them? I'll read some, please. Of them. I hope you do. If I, yes, could, if, if I, if we can see it properly, the main thing, <laughs> exactly. Let me see if I can do the, exactly. Um, how do we do next pages? It just let me do that. Maybe it's like this. That's what I'll have to do. All right. Um, is the whole screen showing or should I change that? Let's see here. View screen. I'm going to make it full screen. That's not right. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? Um, I'd have to zoom in, yeah. Oh. oh. All right. <laughs> Let me try to make it a slight bit bigger because we do want all the listeners as well to enjoy this moment. So... Mm -hmm. Is that better? Nice. Let we forget a short forget. history of early Grand Valley, Colorado. Originally called Orig Parachute, Colorado. By now, Ellerine Durant Murray. First edition. Let's see. Dedicated to Parachute Pioneers. Now, yep. I saw something we're going to eventually... Why is it not let me? Man. I feel like an old lady right now. Let me let me figure this part out. <laughs> I feel like an old man. Sorry, guys. Do you? Sometimes. Let's see if I can get I'm it. Oh, that's what this. I mean. I am not no old person. Y'all going to have to stop. <laughs> stop yourself, not yet, baby. Huh? All right. So we've got the introduction to Parachute, Parachute Creek, Battlement Mesa, Wallace Creek, Morrisana Mesa. Uh, Morrison. It's Morrison now, I think. That's a different name. I'll take it from 10. Go for it. Okay. Rulison and Holmes Mesa, the railroad, land, water, and rage rights, schools, churches. First, early recreations, crimes, and disasters, mineral Ooh. wealth, and proscriptions. Proscripts? Postscripts? Yeah. Postscripts. Yeah. Postscripts. Postscripts. Okay, so I think that... And then... So this is the exciting part. Let me just say this. I have not even looked at the table contents because I wanted it to be like opening a present. No. So if... <laughs> you said... Really? You said you read it. This is the first Oh, I, I did read like half the here. book, but I didn't I'm read the table with. contents because I never wanted to like... Post know what the I've fuck. never read that in my what life. What was it that we saw that you said? <laughs> here we go. Here we go. So, um, do you want to take this, Tim? I don't know if it's the big history enough. is a project.
sponsored by the product of the combined efforts of the members of the House Culture Club of the Grand Valley, organized in 1894. The oldest study liberate. Look, <laughs> yeah, you should take Wait. it. Over. You take it, girl. <laughs> no, it's for you. <laughs> we're 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 adding a little southern spice to it. I already warned the historians about that. I was like, we have a little accent, all of us. <laughs> I don't even know where we're at. The yeah, Studying Literary are. Club in Garfield County. The members have generously contributed their time, memories, material, and skills to this project. And I, a member of the club, have been privileged to do a research and assemble the facts and items I felt would be of general interest. I wish to thank the club for their confidence in me. It has been a wonderfully rewarding experience. The Home Culture Club and I wish to thank the pioneers themselves and their sons and daughters, as well as many others who so graciously have shared with us memories and experiences and events related to them over the years. We are also most grateful to those who have furnished us with documented information and photographs concerning early events which made this short history possible. Many of these kind, generous people, though, though but precious memories now, are not and, will, and never will be forgotten. I wish to express my personal thanks and gratitude to all. I feel weird saying that because. Here, I'll do I didn't this write part. This. Okay. All right, I'll read this part. I wish to express my personal thanks and gratitude to all that have um, uh, aided, aided, me. Aided, aided me in so many ways in arranging and getting these manuscripts ready for publication. Roberta Old, Ode, Ogden. Ode, Ogden. Ogden. Sorry, guys. I'm okay. horrible at names. I'm the worst. So I'll give all the names over. <laughs> no. <laughs> I am too, but I'm just okay. going with it. We are. For proofreading, which has been a time-consuming and gra gracious effort on her part. Virginia Wells for typing all of the original manuscripts, which has also been a gracious and time-consuming <laughs> effort for her. Linda Dutton and Brenda Lit Litston. Um, I'm saying that wrong. Brenda, we're going to go first names, okay? <laughs> uh, who have so meticulously typed the final drafts for publication after I have made so many changes, dele uh, deletions, and additions to the original document. A very special thank you to our granddaughter. Well, we'll leave that part for the rest of you guys to read. Um, that's the main thing I want to explain to everyone, that when we get to some of these parts, I may jump right out of this document. I have trouble seeing it sometimes. That's my problem. Oh, okay. That's all right. Um, let me see. How about that? Did I mess I'm up gonna the zoom screen? In. Okay. Um, but you are watching it from a phone, unfortunately. Let me see if I can make sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on a laptop. You're doing awesome, though. Let's see here. Uh, I'm going to look up, bear with me, everyone. I'm going to pull up my stream and put it on my TV so I can at least see nice, what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Maybe so I'll give do me a that. second. I mean, I think first and foremost, it's pretty awesome. Make sure your um, TV is all the way turned down though. So it doesn't echo. Yeah. But that'll help. Um, yeah. I mean, the main thing is I would, I'm really excited to be the one that is able to share this, but mostly. We want to give credit where credit's due. Right. So I'm not going to read word for word for everything. But like I said, I will be jumping out of some of them to bring more light to the um, information. Like tonight, we are going to go touch very much more, way much, much more on. Um, is it going to let me do it on here? Oh, I'm on a safari. That's not good. Uh, let's see. Um, hang on. I'm going to jump out of here. Okay. Well, I'm not come. I'm not leaving. I'm just gonna pull out and turn the video on for my phone. I think if it won't let me. Hold on. We're gonna try this. We're all I can learning. Mention all my learning. first time being the Colorado. Please, please share while I work this you out. You know, it it came up to me to mention it. It was a uh, a very strange experience because when I showed up, I experienced maybe my third time of seeing snow fall. And um, when I showed up, we went to a park, and there were people climbing on the on the rock faces. And oh, I wow. saw, yeah, we were at I've Garden never of seen the Gods that before, in though. Colorado Springs. Fantastic. And I saw a guy that was 
or maybe a lady that was wearing um an <laughs> orange shirt. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure who it was, but they were wearing an right. orange shirt. And I could have swore they may, might be like 3,000 feet up in the, or however far up in the sky. I saw them right. like maybe an ant. In oh, the were distance. they on a mountain? They were on the side of a rock face. It was oh, like yeah. a 90 degree angle, like a straight It, it always rock freaks face. me out when I see that. I totally yeah, feel I, you. <laughs> I saw them and they, and they were just ascending. Like it was just an average day for them. And for me, I was freezing to death because I come from like a humid, warm climate. So, right. I can hardly stand the snowfall slightly and um, they're climbing in the snowfall at a 90 degree angle, thousands of feet up. It, it's, it's truly intimidating. Right. When you first arrive. It, it, there's a lot of things and there's different culture and it's just something I've never experienced. And right off the bat, I, I thought I might be entertained just by watching, <laughs> watching and observing how awesome some of the people are. Right. No, I mean, honestly, Colorado, yeah, what I, I remember crazy. as a child is it was everything was upslope because I, I started off in Denver for me. And then I remember it being like the mountains in the distance until my mother brought me to like Pikes Center? Peak. Yes, yeah, I used to get bloody noses all the time. Coming from New Orleans, yeah. my skin did not adjust for maybe four or five years. Seriously. And you can kind of feel dizzy <laughs> sometimes when the elevation all the time. is different. You can I get sick to your like stomach. Oh, my elevation. gosh. Yeah, I mean, nosebleeds are pretty common. Like, you're just talking to somebody, and all of a sudden, nothing. Nothing good, you know? <laughs> but no, I mean, this is one of the parts of... Can you still see the screen okay, guys? Yeah. It looks like it's on. I, I have it. There's no echoes on your side? No. Great! I got it to work. Okay, so... The Housing Act of 1859, this particular thing is, a, I believe, like a poem in a sense. And I remember reading this and being like, this is incredible. Like, I just hit the mother load and then looked at 173 pages and I was like, oh my gosh. Like, my child has history, you know, because he was brought home to this house. Um, this is, I love this town. I grew up when I was, you know, 11 years old seeing the mountainside unconstructed so when i start talking about the time periods we will touch on future way down the road after we're done with this you know in the future i think it'll be exciting to kind of see the whole transition of how this town and for listeners who are getting to know this podcast or getting to if you've never been to colorado hey you might want to come see this crazy little town we're going to talk about because from the indian standpoint and the documents i have to share all the things. I'm going to stop right now. I've been right to a lot now. of places, too, and Colorado was a very beautiful place as well. It, it's majestic. It really is. It's colorful to the point that it's it humbling. really does look like God took a, or the universe, or whatever you believe in, took a paintbrush and painted it, and you're just driving into that painting. That's pretty much how it looks out here all the time. And us yeah. who live here are jaded. And, the sky. Right, and, and a lot of people... I mean, if you live in a big city, you can understand this, that you can close your eyes and hope for the idea of what it used to look like. Here, there are real places that they probably, like we said in our last episode, have never found these people on a mountain in their cabin before. You know, they're still there from like smallpox. People that have <laughs> been there their whole, like for <laughs> generations. Right. So this particular home i'm going to read it and then we're going to jump over to a quick facts about this town and then we're going to jump back to this and then we're going to touch on some indian information so hold on one second though can you guys cover i gotta take the dog out i'll be right back yeah that's fine yeah i i was thinking about indians in um southern native louisiana americans. yeah native americans in southern louisiana and the swampland and how conflicting it can be to exist out there. There's like mosquitoes, heat, you know, right. water, just water rising and falling. And like say know? you build a camp and the water rises and there's predators, <laughs> natural predators out there. There's boars. A lot of things. That's some hardcore climate. If you've never experienced the boar in first hand. Um, You're in for a shock. Yeah. Right. They're they're very they're heavy friendly. and tough. It's nothing like Pumbaa. They no. have very thick skulls. They're um, I'm not sure if it's territorial or what, but 
if you're walking through the woods and and boars see you there there's a good chance that they might charge you and mm-hmm. it's they have very very sharp <clears throat> touch and it can cause huge lacerations or this and that you know don't it, they eat full bones people I'm think that sure maybe they, they can take a pig full on but this is a very large pig that has razor sharp um teeth and he's got that are yeah tusks and he's, they're hungry hungry they hungry, protrude hungry, out they? of their face and they're they're razor sharp yeah poor they're, listeners are like what are we hearing yeah <laughs> that's yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll cover well, that one day yeah, no, for also real though. That, that Indians you're have right. to deal with these things, and and maybe even in uh, Colorado, that's you said to take over, but that's what mountain I've experienced. Lions? So, no, yeah, mountain real. lions. I couldn't imagine what what Think they about, dealt with just seen, to have their home. Like what we're gonna um, no, touch on. No roads, some of the some of the visuals I will share with you guys tonight. I mean, we're just getting started, but some of the visuals I'll share tonight really will blow your mind of where they. have where they built, what kind of land this was. I have some drone footage in the future, if not this episode. So, like for the buffalo. That's yes. Very sad. The Miss woolly Marie mammoth. Has braided her hair tonight. The woolly mammoth are the most. They found so many in my area. It's just not even funny. So if you think about that, they all migrated here. The Indians always I mean, followed even down into Texas. There's like buffalo it was buffalo land oh yeah right so clearly i mean i we've There's just taken montana much, man we've just taken we're gonna touch on so many different places and I, wish, and I just can't wait to share yes i just wish one day that we could free roam animals and, and let right just be horses and cattle be cattle and or not cattle but you know cows of any sort you know any type of large animal let them let them be themselves without it being a hunt hunting ground or right somewhere where there's some type of resource gathered from well, animals like you a, know i may not be of uh that's what they're meant to do is standing to in here but i still want to eat my steak and live their hey, life hey what we're yeah. going to learn about tonight even the there can area be a, a fine balance possibly the native americans when they took away their land we will learn about tonight a big portion of it they only told them you can't live here anymore but you can come hunt where we live Come and get your animal. Go and away, though. The whole thing. Yeah. It's incredible. What we're going to learn tonight is just eye opening and touching. Rude to even say. Yeah, I like, know. Believe, and there's visuals. To tell I will a group be of showing. people. Right. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to read this and then we're going to get into the fun stuff. So this is a poem that I've, this is the first one I ever read. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. I can't wait to get into this. So, Housing Act of 1859. There wasn't any architect, no banker made a loan. To solve their housing problem, they were strictly on their own. They didn't sign a mortgage and they didn't own a lot. Just stopped the covered wagon at a likely looking at a likely looking spot, meaning the view was incredible. Okay. No lumber yards were running. They cut timber in the hills and hewed hewed it into and hewed it into beams and joints and doors and window sills. They had to hand saw every plank and uh, quarry every stone. But finally, they got it done, a home to call their own. No mansion, but a sturdy home. Their own strong hands had made. It stood on fertile acres that had never been surveyed. No warranty, no no abstract fee, no red tape legal fuss. They just came out and built the West. And left all that to us. So when I read this, my heart was like, wow. Now, I live in a a very interesting home and a very interesting land we're going to learn about. When I moved in, when people like me from the 1980s were able to live on this hill. But we're going to learn about the whole spot. So without further ado, let me also pull up something very interesting. Because this is where we want to go. Hold on a second now. Thank you for all your patience tonight. I'm not looking at the comments, so I apologize if I'm missing out. But (laughs) I'll be back. I'll be back. So we've got, I think this is the one. Yes, indeedy. Now, this is just the simple facts, quick little, you know, let's pull up some ideas here. Now, parachute runs along the I-70. That's parachute there, 
right right here geographically yes and um let's give you a little idea of in the map there's grand junction can you guys see this okay yeah i don't know if you can okay good and if you look we're going to be looking at a lot more maps but if you look at kind of this area over here where the utah area this is where most of the indians that i live native americans that i had lived in their land were forced to go up north or they migrated completely south but most of them for over huge amounts of time we will be discussing in specifics denver is um three hours away to the east and so if you can imagine this was the area that was booming way before our town got crazy now yeah. it's an interesting place because it's land that was indian owned by the ute indian they're um pronounced they pronounced the town incorrectly and thought it was it was like pakashoon but it's like parachute is what the white people initially oh, thought so uh, what we're going to learn in this little short quick excerpt here are some amazing quick facts about the area so uh located in the crossroads between the rugged mountains rigid in the mesas and plateaus of colorado's western slope the region surrounding ballant mesa and parachute was once the seasonal campground of the ute indians later the area appealed to the early settlers who tried who who, tired of cold winters in the high mountain terrain, um, sought a more modern climate for ranching and farming. As a result, the valley is rich in both Native American history and as well as that of early Colorado settlers. Starting in the mid to late 1800s, the area transitioned from first farming and ranch to mineral extraction with links to both the east and the west coast via the railroad and later by the automobile today. In the 21st century, Parachute and Battlement Mesa are highly desirable communities. Yes, Battlement Mesa, desirable communities for those seeking deserve, uh, deserve recreational opportunities and a desire to enjoy the great Colorado outdoors. Now that's the, that's the come here, move and buy our expensive property logo, but this is where things get interesting. Did you know the town of parachute is the home of the the rock that burns now this is a the interesting rock that burns what is the that? rock that burns in 1882 pioneer mike callahan built a cabin with an oil slate sail oil shale rock fireplace despite stern warnings from the U indians so the rocks already were rich in the oil that we pull out of the earth when we do fracking out here he built his fucking fireplace out of that right oh, wow. and the ute indians told him not to the shale rock from from the fireplace ignited and set the fire to the cabin which burned to the ground forever afterward mike callahan was an oil shale advocate mike callahan uh is it wait was this mountain callahan the spect oh they so they named it that mount callahan the spectacular peak west of parachute was named in the, his honor. In addition to the oil shell, the area is rich in sodium ash deposits as well as abundant amounts of natural gas, including propane and butane. No wonder it smells funny here all the time. Locally produced yeah. natural gas and soda ash are now sold through the U.S. and worldwide. Isn't that incredible? Just think about that. You're like a... <laughs> in, you know, a you probably. He probably lived in that house in a certain time where he didn't need the fireplace. And then <laughs> yeah. his brand new house. He's like, screw those Indians. They're trying to screw me over. I'm going to light this bitch. Fireplace, huh? My God. I wonder if it was like an actual explosion or a quick burn. Like, that's, that's intense. Burn for a while. It's that's like intense. Like a, a rock that burned? Yeah. Um, let me. For a while, it's dense. Let me just say, there's some pretty awesome things I'm going to be sharing with you guys. I it's found some visuals on this website and some others that hopefully, you know, we'll dig into if we have time. But it even shows some of these cabins that were so well built by, surprisingly, the white men. They knew what they were doing in these harsh climates. But they built these cabins and were able to actually haul them off of the, the lands and sell off the cabins as historic buildings. Which is kind of crazy they did that, but... 
I have pictures of it. We'll be featuring later. So did you know Battle at Mesa was named for surrounding uh, geographical formations? Two majestic flat top mesas overlooking Battle at Mesa provide you. Oh, you got to come visit. Uh, two majestic flat. We got to come and then ghost hunt a little here. I'm saying it right now because this place is strange. Um. Yeah. I want to really look. I'm going to go to the city planning EMPs and try to find and out if um, my land has any historic remembrance because that large orb, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go look at one of my previous videos before the podcast started. Something visited me for a while. So this thing, it was so strangely in a pattern. It does the same patterns. It's like, I wonder if there is residual on this land. So rich in deposits, right? Definitely. I mean, Holy I mean, crap. I feel like many of places they're undermined, but there's a lot of residual is, energy on is, Earth. Do we know right now? Do we know in this group here? Do we know if oil is a spiritual conductor? I don't know if it is. Is crude? <laughs> I haven't even thought that deep into it. That That's a great... It's a good job. thing to look into, right? I don't know, but so what these... I do know is we're running out of it. Right. Oh, oh wow. even, Watch us find right. out the it's properties of it far too late. Wait, wait. Say it again. You go for it. Go for it. Watch us uh, find out the properties and the importance of these properties far too late, you know, when we run right. out of the, the material. Well, I think that's that why they're, they're slowly making it a legal thing. Like, my area is very involved in fighting for... Or oil families, as you would. And, you know, we're coming from Louisiana. They're oil families, too. These people are being moved all over the country. Like, I just heard the debate for Colorado, we will touch on the future, is that their real argument is that why isn't Canada giving us Colorado water? Why isn't they got plenty of water? Why they, they why isn't um, the Murray, Missouri River helping us out? You know, like, come on, greedy bastards. California doesn't need all of Colorado's water. This is a real thing, people currently happening like this year conversations so um yeah i probably will eventually move away from this area unfortunately because i like water <laughs> i need rain yeah you know? but to give it honor is part of my life for sure to give it honor to give it love this area i want to learn all that i can and share all that i can on my podcast as an ode to the memories that i have in this area the positive and all the interesting things that I'm going to learn from living in this spot and you guys being in this amazing journey. So um, the next fun part, let's see here. Let's go. This is just an awesome little document we have to go through. So let's see. Um, here we go. Did I mess up? Um, where are we at? To provide year-round vistas. Okay. So... The two majestic flat top mesas overlooking Ballant Mesa provide year round vistas resembling um, in, in carp. I don't know what that word is. In a skep. <laughs> oh, did I lose you guys? No. Um, is it hard to see? Yeah. I got to go take care of the Chihuahua. Bear with me, friends. <laughs> the Chihuahua. I love Chihuahuas. And I walk outside, and there is rain. It's so funny. Hello there, Parachute. You're being funny with me. <laughs> so, um, let's see here. I would like to... Where are you at? We're at the two majestic flat-top mesas overlooking Battlement Mesa. Um, I don't know what that word is. E-S... Scrap... Escreeps? Escrapments. Escrapments. The Fortress of Old... Yeah. With sloping, projecting battlements. So that's interesting mm -hmm. in its own because there is um, another piece I will go take a picture of, of Battle at Mesa. There's uh, the old battlement. I'm sure it's even in here, but here we go. Um, the layered formations beckon on active visitors, oh, beckon on active visitors to enjoy an all day hike to the top of battlement. Part of the largest. Um, Contagious, is that what? Contagious Mesa in the United States running, for, oh, continuous Mesa running in the U.S. 
um, from Grand Junction to Rifle. Oh, that's interesting. Hikers can enjoy native cutthroat fishing ponds, lush meadows, wildlife, spontaneous 360 degrees. Pioneer ranchers from the Colorado River Valley uh, beneath these me mesas, uh, wait, beneath these mesas to be ideally suited for raising cattle in the 1879 the ranching community built a quarried rock school in, on the mesa today battlement school the queen of the mesa oh my gosh so that's that little building that's very interesting has been re you renovated to the site wow oh let me see, let me see if i can pull it back up from the beginning i think it's going to show there it is and this place, oh, wow. I have some look at the mountain right. or the the hill, whatever it's right. considered. It, it's beautiful, isn't that amazing? So, like, what they That's say the is that in in the mountainside, if you can kind of see that, that they look like parachutes. All of the mountain peaks oh, that okay. it establishes from, but then hold on, see that too. In the look at the shadows in the mountainside, they look like parachutes. So that's yeah. supposedly what, but okay. Let's go back to the fun stuff. So, all right, this is the one I'm going to, if you guys want to read it one by one, you're more than happy to, but, um, the one that really got me was this part. So did you know parachute is the only town in the world with the name, according to legend, a member of the Heidel survey in 1879 noted that the watershed pattern of the ruined plateau, nor for the present day parachute resembled parachute lines and chose the name parachute for the area. So that's what I was just saying. Mountain like gives these like weird echoes. And then for the area, according to a June 30th, 1910 edition of the local paper, which I'm going to go to my local library soon and pull up those actual things. See if I can get photocopies. I want to give you guys like a whole rich experience of me sharing this docu-series and podcast with you guys who are just listening in audio form so you can kind of learn if you're one of those people who don't want to read a book well guess what i do all the work we're all here together now <laughs> so um it says however the town's name came from the ute word pakashu which is when i looked it up it didn't sound Pukashu. like that i'm like i don't i don't look right because when i played the little siri sound it was totally different so everybody i suggest you you so should look we look this up? The area. <laughs> they already did like bring it. Was it back to Grand the... Valley. Here it gets better. Yeah. And this is where this is where this is the corruption of the area. The first taste of it. You ready for your little tiny piece of bread with some butter? Yeah. Here it comes. Yeah. Here it goes. In 1904, this is two years after the water situation. Okay, so they're like on it. In 1904, local <laughs> residents changed the town's name to Grand Valley to take advantage of a real estate promotion in the nearby Grand Junction, which is suited to in the Grand Valley River. So when the railroad conductor announced, next stop, Grand Valley, settlers disembarked thinking it was Grand Junction, which is 45 minutes ago or minutes away if you take a car to this day and age in the 2022. When the railroad conductor announced, next stop, Grand Valley settlers disembarking, thinking it was Grand Junction, local sales agents at the train depot were on the hand to tell settlers about Grand Valley parachute properties. Grand Junction hated having mm -hmm. one put over them by such a small town. In, eight, in 1980, the town was renamed to Parachute. Now, I moved in 1996, or hold on, 94 maybe it was, 96, 95, 96, between then. So I was very kind of new to the land, and it looked totally different when we initially moved here. So, like, it's a lot, like, to imagine what it was before they got it ready to be sold and what it was mm -hmm. back in the 1900s. Like, we're talking prohibition yeah. existed in New Orleans at this time. And here we are, this little tiny town, being like, we're going to scam you. Get off the train. Come live here. Oh, you don't have any more money for a ticket? Sorry, bitch. Move in. <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> wow. You know, right. I, I heard one of my good friends, I think it was earlier today, actually, he mentioned that certain cities 
you know, you, you're raised there and you, you live your whole life and you become spellbound to the place in a certain way. Mm-hmm. And um, it's almost like a trap. It's like you can make your way out and do great things. Right. And something always pulls you back to come and check it out again, you know? And right. I've noticed a lot of predominant figures die in their city. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of crazy. Like, they, they travel the entire world and they lay their head at the same place that, I, I don't know, that, that spell. But you know what? No. No. Let's put it out there. You know who was. But there's also them? people who are successful in this. Jim cities. Morrison. He died <laughs> in Paris, did he not? And then he came and was yeah. buried in Hollywood, right? Yeah. I think so. Am I wrong? Am I completely off? I'm probably totally wrong. I'm going to insult Ashley, who's listening. One of oh. my my fellow YouTubers, Loner Morrison, look her up. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's an interesting analogy. It is true. Like, when when you get older, I think we do fight for that nostalgia. My only reason for coming back to this town was it was <clears throat> still practicing the the 1980s, like what we're going to learn a little bit about, of their um, build a dream, a pipeline idea. Come here. Initially, it was just you could rent a place, and then it was build a dream, buy a house. And I found so much, too, that I will be sharing with the listeners. So you guys, if you're moving to this area, there's so much good, and there's so much interesting about the history. But... um, <clears throat> So let's get back to the insanity. Here we go. So... Did you know Battle Mesa is the only planned community on the Western Slope? Battle Mesa originally created by Exxon. Exxon. Take that in. They owned it. Let's take a break. Let's go back. Battle Mesa originally, did you know, is the only planned community on the Western Slope. Do you know another? I want to look into that. Originally created by Exxon in the late 70s as a two or 25,000 person residential community. They invested in people. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, residential community for Exxon's oil slate employees has been transformed into a planned community with friendly, easy to know residents. residents. Uh, the 32,000 acre <clears throat> Sorry, you guys. Bear with me. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. I'm back. Okay. Girl, okay. The 32, Girl. right? 3,200 acre uh, covenant protected community, which means it's an HOA, featured an 18 hole golf course, tennis courts, mile of paved walking, and biking trails. 767 acres of desiccated open space and great Colorado River fishing and rafting. Now, I will say this coming back that to 2022. Oh, it is. And actually, everything is pristine. Like, you, they don't play around. It's an interesting place. Yes. And so, did you know Parachute promotes alternative energy? Isn't that funny? Now, let's wow. look at the history. Let's just take a moment. They came in, took the land. We're going to talk about all that. We're, we're just, all we're doing is a palate cleanser. Have you ever had like a, a, ta- a tapas, guys? You know, you eat a lot of little things and then you're sort of full. Maybe you'll eat more. You know, <laughs> that's what we're going to do tonight. Tomorrow, I'll e- even be reading some more. But um, uh, let's see. Here we go. Here we go. Parachute has acknowledged the importance of alternative energy by recently installing solar flowers, which provide energy at the visitor's cabin and information center off of I-70. Now, that's not enough, Parachute. (laughs) That's not, that's, that's the bathroom lights at the rest stop, Parachute. Do you hear me? Not working with that. But yes. Yeah. Real shit. (laughs) But It's nice to see that we are putting it on the roadside. I'll say that's an improvement. I also will say that in the 1990s that I lived here, you know, they were just starting to put plants in the ground and make it look like a community. Before, you kind of look like you're in a desert just plopped down, which you will see in this brochure. We're about to go pull ourselves over. Like, once once you put a city in the desert, like, it starts to appear like it's 
it's way and they did use. nuclear thing on my land i can't wait to talk about that you ready guys nuclear so testing? we're not gonna oh let's go there we're not gonna go there yet but you will find out so this is the awesome Col, col, okay, Colaro. Colaro is his name. It sounds like cholera, but it's not. It's Colaro. Colaro, <laughs> Chief Colaro. I know. Okay, and if you look up the word Colaro, Chief Colaro, you will find so much about this interesting man. Let me just blow your guys' mind. Chief Colaro is the symbolic of the period of the transition parachute area, as he was the chief of the Ute Indians who first called the area their home. And he also knew the first permanent settlers in this area. Drawing by Connie Murray from a Colorado Historican uh, Society photo. Now, oops, I'm sorry. So let's just like, this is a black and white photo. I apologize. Hold on. Man, guys, we're going to do this so I can see it. All right. So this is a cabin. Now I got to find out the location because it looks similar to a um hold on let me make sure you can you even see you can't see it can you damn wow. hold on guys hold on let me stop sharing this and we're gonna get it set up at least i read it that's what's important so share let's go to i can't wait to show you guys this all right so let me go back to the the lovely chief my my little my mouse pad's not my friend. Here we go. We so this is <clears throat> a few different chiefs throughout time, you know. We will. I think we should definitely hit on New Orleans history and their Indian yeah. tribes because that's the land. We're not just talking about New Orleans. We're not just talking about Colorado. Straight up, but don't you want to look into your family's her heritage and yeah. understand the roots more? I think it makes sense Actually, to understand why I they had to move. Think about our family's heritage, but, um, like where our mother is from is DeRitter. And I don't know if y'all know, but, um, that was actually named after a lady. Really? Yeah. And, um, DeRitter. actually our great grandfather, uh, his, he, him and his dad found water to bring to DeRitter. And wow. like they figured out where to, I guess basically dig, but you have to go. So they're so far. the canal. They were the canal and originals. Then, but, well, they didn't. It wasn't canals. It was like okay. naked wells. It, gotcha. You, do, you tee off a yard, and they were able to right. figure out where to go. But they basically like, I don't know the technical term. I'll have to look it up. But um, it was like this tee, like metal looking thing, and they would stomp the ground until they found out where the water was. Anyway, wow. but then what's crazy is that the way that he died, this is just a quick story, but the no, way that no, he go died for it. Is, um, he was out at his farm and his horse kicked him and oh, wow. he, like, he got up like he was a, he was a country boy, you know, wow. I mean, he was, a man. He, um, he had kids. A lot of people walked in. Yeah, he was in, he was in his early thirties. Well, huh. he went home, <clears throat> he went home that night and, uh in front of my oh, grandfather my and his other children, he, he died. He had a heart attack and died. Like, Oh my attack. goodness. Yeah. That's but, um, wow. My grandmother Rosella Lord. was kind of like heartbroken after that, but, um, they clearly had money because of the water. Right. He, he did find the water, but just a crazy little story. Cause I know that we're going to get into the whole water situation there. Right. No, I mean, I'm going to probably start a little clip tonight of that, too, because I think it's worth sharing at least just the visual. But just so you guys get an idea, this is the Indian. And I'm sorry, Native American Indian. He, they were referred to that. They understood it. We're not being derogatory, just to make that very clear. Any listeners, um, let's be friendly here. But the actual Native American chief, Kalara, um, Kalara, is how they pronounced it. So this one we're going to go with. Um, was a Ute chief of the Ute Mountain Utes, skilled horseman and warrior. He was involved in a treaty negotiating with the U.S. government in 1879. He fought during the Mere Massacre. Eight years later, his family members were attacked during 
Colorado's War. He was placed in the Jefferson County Hall of Fame in recognition of his, wait, uh, of for the contributions that he made to our country and indeed our state and nation. Now, the things I, I, I think are very interesting about him, let me just read one of my favorite parts because he's a little naughty man. Let me just say this. This is interesting though. Colorado was born in a Comanche, Comanche, Comanche. I'm not saying that right. Comanche. Born a Comanche. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Oh, my God. Poor listeners. Your ears. Okay. About 1810, five years later. So think about this. He's a five-year-old little boy. Five years later, there was a battle in northern New Mexico, which resulted in him being kidnapped by the Manches, Manche band of Utes. He received the nickname Red or Colorado, which is what Colorado stands for in um, native tongue means red so um for his particularly red skin or as compared to the utes so this is the part that just cracked me up hold on let me find it at the bottom here do you want to read a little bit of this let's see hold on let me see which one it is or his wife that was so interesting hold on let me see if i can see it do you want me to blow it up some more yeah don't mind let me do that Mm. Let's see here. Let me see if I can find that one little part. Personal life. Let's just we're gonna we're gonna skip all that. You guys can refer to the other stuff. His personal life cracked me up. I and the interesting part about his death was the same day my mother passed away. So I was like, this is weird. <laughs> I never even whoa. Okay, so here we go. Personal life. And my mom never looked into this stuff. And he like, married you know. three women who may have all may all have been sisters. His first wife, Rika, gave, gave birth to three of his children. Uh, what? You know, Kamramaha, <laughs> Kalara, Pocachina. <laughs> We're going to say Gus. I'm glad they gave us Gus. And a girl named... Tolly, it looks like Tollywack. That's what it looks like. To Pollywa. Um <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Why <laughs> would you have us read this part? <laughs> well, no, I did, I'm saying I'm going to read it, but uh, Richa died when riding a horse, she fell off the horse and her foot was caught in the stirrup and she was dragged to her death. He had six other children with uh, sisters. So think about, and this was so I never thought about that in inbreeding. I never even thought about that. Like that there could be so much weird bloodline through the Indians. I never even thought about that till I read this part. And I was like, holy crap. And and yet we're on the Utah border. That that kind of polygamy involvement, is that a spiritual normal thing that they did? Where's the Ure reservation? Ooh, oh, Array. Array. It's where they have um, hot springs and whatnot. Um, hold on a second. Let me see if I can pull up that one video. Because we should seriously watch this about him. Is this the one? I think this is the one. No, nope, it's not about this one. That you moved from Jefferson Parish to Jefferson County. I know. Isn't that weird? And, um, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. Hold on a second. It's going to have to be on our spiritual episode. I'll describe all the symbolism, the symbolism that happened in my life when I moved back to this area. Hold on. We're going to find this great more videos. So, all right. Well, gonna, go for it. For the majority of your life, you've lived in Jefferson. Um, guess so. Yeah. Back and forth. Back yeah, and forth, but man. Jefferson all the way, like county <sighs> or parish. Right? Let's see here. Um, it would be... Jefferson. What does Jefferson mean? Who's <laughs> the famous Jefferson? Are we talking about the show? Like Jefferson on the 
you said it i had to <laughs> right yeah. here we go i found it um this is amazing here we go let me see if this will work i'm gonna have to make it share stop sharing stop sharing there we go all right can you hear me oh no share screen all right can you see it oh no stop sharing Are you there? Oh, I think you might be muted. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry about that. It cut out, so I had to drop out and drop back in. Okay, so I'm going to mute myself on here. I'm going to play this video and hopefully... Um, okay. Hopefully you can hear me. I will double check if you can hear. Just say something in the message if you don't mind, Marie. Okay. Okay. is in the image of the Collaro family from around 1874. Hi everyone, my name is Ike and I work in information services at Mesa County Libraries. I'm a librarian. And today I'm going to be talking about Collaro who was a Ute chief. Colero was an influential leader who was born in about 1813 as a Comanche. As a youth, he was captured by Mohawk chiefs and he was raised and lived as a Ute. He died on December 11th, 1888 on the Uinta Reservation in Utah and his burial took place on December 13th, 1888. I've got a couple slides I want to mention, um, just as images or photographs of Colero. This first slide is a, a photograph of Colero from January 1888. The next slide is an image of Colero taken between 1869 to 1870. You can see that below that image, it actually has him named as Colorado, and Colorado was um, not necessarily an alias, but just another name that he was sometimes called. The next slide shows us a picture including Colorado's wife, Sia, on the left, and she's seated. The next slide is an image of the Colorado family from around 1874. The next slide is continuing. We've got a photograph of a group of Utes um, from sometime in the mid 1870s. These Utes were visiting the Colorado Springs area and we can see that Colorado himself is seated on the front row on the right side of that photograph. Colorado was often mentioned in newspapers from the 1880s, really all across the Western states. 
even as far back or as far away as Georgia and Tennessee. Can you believe that as far as Georgia and Tennessee? Can you guys unmute yourself for a second? Yeah, that's pretty wild. Right. Now, I'm going to take us on a different journey for a second. Um, after I get to the big point, we're not watching this 24 minute video. We will go through this video in more depth later. I just want to get to one little part that gives you guys a physical visual of what happened to my area. Cause I showed you guys on the map, just a small spot, but what really happened to these natives in this area? And I feel for them and I will honor them as far as I can. So what we're going to do is let him speak a few more minutes. I think it gets up to about, let's see, I think it's four minutes in. Let me make sure. I don't want to waste anyone's time tonight. But yes, uh, about five minutes in. So give us like three more minutes, and then I'm going to jump over to another video. It really just describes Colorado's history so much. And including the PDF, I will be jumping on that, of course, in more in-depth reading. So everybody just hang on. This is the best way to do it. <laughs> Okay, very I'm gonna meet. Very interesting. Right. I mean, Georgia and Tennessee. Now, I think we're gonna hear in the history books that we're gonna look into for Louisiana that there was handoffs of negotiating. They're all kinds of working together. Had to be trading. You know. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. He was also one of the more well-known youths during the 19th century. And his name often appears in books about the history of the Ute people. A woman named Lena Urquhart uh, also wrote a book about Colorado titled Colorado, the Angry Chieftain. During Colorado's life, he would have witnessed really a complete change in the Ute life ways. Um, and his ancestral or the youth's ancestral homeland had been reduced steadily during several treaties. These treaties eventually resulted in three reservations across Colorado and Utah. The next couple slides are actually going to be some maps. This first map is showing us the states of Colorado, Utah, and New Mexico. And we've got, the map shows us the distribution of the bands of Utes across those states. And all of these maps came from the book, The Ute Indians of Colorado, Utah, and New Mexico by Virginia McConnell Simmons. In this first map, we can see that the, the, the territory of the Moach Utes was in the section labeled number 12, just to put it in perspective so we can take a, a moment to really keep that on the screen for a second. Those are how the tribes were actually put together. When I looked up mine, what it was is supposedly number eight, if we're going to look on this little demographic at the bottom. And I did do some more research, and it's so misconstrued with history. It's going to take a bit more in in information to see what the misunderstood names of each tribe were. From white man to actual Indian writing, it's incredible. But... Anyway, let me keep going. Sorry, guys. Basically, it's going to be south central Colorado and then dipping down into north central New Mexico. This next slide is showing us the map, um, showing us the Ute reservations in 1868. Uh, we can see we've got the Uinta Reservation in Utah and then also... So if you guys can actually see, like hopefully you can see my mouse. I believe you can. So this is the area I was referencing prior in the yeah, video. And then we've got, this is where I live. This is the canyon. Do, 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 do. So right here. Now, I'm going to wow. keep my mouse right there. And we're about to be so sad. Those are all rivers there? No, that's all Indian reservation land that was acceptable. And those were tribes that were still there. Anything in the hashed coloring were Indian land. So yeah. so if we were thinking about a few minutes ago what it said, Colorado didn't have any on the eastern side. It was all my area was just saturated. And some of Utah and then 
like the mother earth of basically this historic Indian area, right? And then you see what happens next. Oh my gosh, it's about to destroy. It's 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 the Louisiana Purchase all over again. Here right, we go. You'll Here have we go. to mute us because um, I'll mute you. Zoomed it in. Okay. Oh, the consolidated Colorado reservations. Moving on to 1873, following the Bruneau Agreement, we can see that we have the Uinta the Uinta Reservation in Utah essentially looks the same. However, the Colorado Reservation was quite quite a bit was changed quite a bit. Um, we can see that really that lower almost that entire lower third of the Colorado Reservation was taken away. In the 1882 map, we can see that once again, in the sort of a, a theme, the Colorado Reservation was, was subtracted or decreased in size even more so. We can see that it's very down there in the very lower left-hand corner of the state, um, just a tiny sliver of what it had been previously. However, incredible, is it not incredible? Let me unmute you. Sorry about that. Incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it just, isn't Upper, it just. It, it's that little hashed area. Yep. 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 Is a little hash. Or is it just like. Devastating. What, what they're. What we're about to see on the next video just puts everything this man put in our eyes, which is so textbook and librarian because he is. But um, sorry, listeners, it's a fact. We appreciate you, though, all you librarians out there. But he um, he gives it justice when we actually listen to the next video. So <clears throat> I'm going to let him finish out this, but I'm not going to let it's like a minute more. And then we're going to go to this other video that I'm going to have you guys give me your your input and then we're gonna play with more of uh the pdf if we're on time so we're doing pretty good tonight where are we at we got like, probably 30 more minutes or so depending on how you guys are feeling but here we go let's do this on the opposite side or i should say on the utah side of things the uinta reservation actually increased in size by a little bit where it goes right over to the eastern utah state line so that was 1882. In 1895, on this next slide, we can see that really the, the Uinta Reservation in Utah, that's basically the same. In the Colorado Reservations, it was actually broken up into two reservations. And we can see that the one actually dips down into very northern, the northern section of New Mexico. So that was how those Ute reservations changed over time. Pause. Isn't, isn't that, isn't that interesting? Here we go. Okay. So, so just keep that in mind and let me blow your mind with this. We will introduce ourselves more to that video on another day. I'm going to pull up another video. Because it just, you, we can't read the, the PDF yet without understanding really what Colorado is diverse. Yeah. From the words of these actual natives, the people that have the story. Okay. And I'm so proud to share this. So I will be linking all of these beautiful channels. Truth. It is. And we're, we were talking about spirit and culture. What is history? history. What is the American history in Colorado? The history of Native Americans overlaps a lot. Territories overlap with each other. Colorado, of course, was not always Colorado. So we have to consider a much larger region when we think about Native American occupation. Uh, neighboring states, because the territories uh, overlap into what we know as Colorado, into Utah, Wyoming, or Nebraska, Kansas, New Mexico, Arizona. So it's a very large region that we're talking about, quite a number of different tribes. It's not a textbook. It was the last book that was written about the use of the youths of the 20th century. And it was uh, put out, in, I believe, in 1992. And that took folks up to a period of the early 90s, late 80s of our leadership. 
there's been 20 years since that book came out and so much has happened for our tribes it's not, not a lecture. lecture now in spite of the fact that uh, we have 35 40,000 indians in the state and we are active in a lot of areas the fact remains people of colorado still know very little about native american history and contemporary indians as well it's not, not just, just in, in our past, past. I would want non-natives to know that we're still here, that uh, we're not an object of the past, that, you know, what, what you see on TV in terms of a burial site being found in the state of Colorado wasn't the last Indian in the state, uh, we, that we have a population, we have a thriving population. It's all around us. Well, my name is Ben Sherman, and I come here from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. My name is Carol Harvey. I'm the executive secretary for the Colorado Commission of Indian Affairs here in Colorado. I'm an enrolled member of the Navajo Nation. My name is Ernest House. Uh, I'm a uh, member of the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe uh, in Toyot, Colorado. My name is Terry Knight. I'm the uh, Tribal Historical Preservation Officer and also um, what they, they call a spiritual leader. Uh, over 54 tribes occupied what is now considered the state of Colorado, but this was really not a geographic region to Indian tribes that existed in this area. The Ute Indian tribes, for example, uh, lived within the cor four corners of the state, but also within what is considered Utah and New Mexico today. So tribes did not look at states as boundaries. They looked at their homelands, and so uh, we had a number of tribes living in this area. The Navajos considered their homeland to be bounded by four sacred mountains. Two of those sacred mountains are here in Colorado, the mountain of the north and the mountain of the east. And so Colorado may be a state as it's considered within the 50 states of the United States, but for the Navajo, it was part of their homeland. Uh, Mount Blanca, for example, is the eastern mountain of the Navajo's homeland. And for the Navajos, these mountains were very sacred and they were very important. We have deities that live on these mountains today. The past and the future are very real for us. Dawn youth and Dawn girl live on Mount Blanca here within the state boundaries of Colorado. I think people tend to forget that our American Indian culture and heritage was here long before these buildings or these concrete or these roads that were put into place. That culture and heritage have been embedded in these communities and in this ground and the rock and the earth long before we as native even, even got here. Uh, and, and so and isn't that incredible? Just take that part in. That's it's wild. just it is so in, I mean, so think about where they put themselves. These the natives where it was all we've what have we talked about so many episodes about gut and <laughs> a drive in finding your soul where are you driven <laughs> like right there holy crap right and if you look at the map the way that it was constructed i mean literally what we're going to find out through the history and in this video i mean i have to stop it here and there so it's not your screen playing tricks on you i have to stop it for youtube reasons but um i find it really quite interesting that when we say wasn't it 54 tribes of yeah. different chiefs? And that's what really makes this a very incredible story to know that my town had this one particular chief who had so much importance as far as he did, how stretching he did. Well, and to under Right, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna meet you guys again. Hold on. <laughs> We're getting it. We're getting it done. All right. It's interesting because when we preserve and we look at things of how to preserve our culture and heritage, that's a struggle that every generation fights with, but more so my generation because I'm um, the first out of five generations who cannot speak you fluently. We can't teach people how to do these things. Yes, we can teach them and show them, but uh, I learned from observation, from being around my, my, uh, my parents, my grandparents, my uh, 
my brothers, my uncles, and doing the dance, learning the songs from them, being there with them, being associated with them. And that's how I learned it, to do these things. And I, I know those things to, do, to this day. But the younger kids, um, I guess the way you want to get them to dance or whatever is to put it in the iPod and stick it in their ear. Maybe they'll learn it that way. You know, I think someone might think of a traditional Indian as someone that uh, speaks his native language and that lives on the reservation. But over 50% of Indians today live in urban areas. And we are as much traditional as those Indians that still reside on the reservation. Our language is important. Our culture is important. Our history is important. Uh, I have written stories of my family so that my children and my grandchildren will have them. And yet I have never lived on the Navajo reservation. And yet I consider myself traditional as well as contemporary. The persistence of tribes in the United States has been such that we today, for the most part, are able to salvage a good part of our cultures. We lost many tribes, but many have survived. We lost a lot of our cultures in the past, but many parts of our culture survive today. So we are on a path of restoration of our cultures and our traditions. And Native Americans today feel that that was one of the most important things that we can do for our people is to restore, to preserve our cultures and our languages. Don't you guys think? Hold on, sorry. I love Hello. his double braid. That's really cool. Hold on a second. <laughs> it says, stop us chatting. That's what we need. Isn't that intense? We will touch more on that video, I think, at a later time. Um, but, I mean, what have you guys so far digested from what I have shared about my little bitty town in a silly, silly way? And I'm bringing up a nuclear because we're going to go into the future, too, because that's important. Because if we can get you excited, guys, nuclear testing. I wasn't going to bring it up yet, but I think it's necessary. For sure. Let's see. Testing battlement. Let's see here. I'm just going to show you guys a visual. Colorado. I'm not going to play the video. I'm just going to bring it up so you guys see what I'm talking about. Oh, it's not even. Okay, well, timing's bad. So, nope, nope, no dead air. Okay. <laughs> Apologize. All right, we're going to get back to the PDF and I'll just... Um... I'm just glad that we gave a mention to the people that did live on this land and right and it, it will give it more idea beautiful lives you know and right it's Let's just see. an amazing thing to hear about <coughs> right and i i mean beautiful. um let's see here there it is so just to know we now know his face we now understand mr colaro yeah look at and, him right i feel different <laughs> when you finally see him you're like he wow wise he is, and, and he's been in many places, and he happened to end up helping us, this area, settle. And so you would have these log cabins. You would have, you know, the settlements be very harsh. Hold on, let me pull this down so I can read it myself. So first family of Parachute and their first home they built here. And from the left to right, Miss Hal Halbert holding Lotta Sherhorn. Next to Luther and Mark Hulbert, Minnie, I love the name Minnie, Clark, Clark, Lou, Wayne, May, Burnside, and Mr. Hurlbert. Am I saying that wrong? Uh, Herbert, Herbert, in the back row. Miss, uh, excuse me, Bilter, Billiter, Billiter, Joe Trimmer, and wife. Francis, also daughter of the Hilberts. Um, eventually, I would like to even look for their gravestones in the future because I feel like this is all powerful. And I right. know that you said, you know, and we'll just let the audience know that tomorrow you're going to be going over this. Way more in depth, yes. 
for today was in. are you having your um Tuki Rue and I will be stepping out tomorrow. We have some things an event. Um are you going to be having your an, a different co host and um, I'm going to be working on that. If not, it might just be myself and we'll be going over more material to, you know, on the next episode. But yes, uh, I'm working on a local who also works in the original train station we'll be featuring. I think it's shown yeah. right. Yeah. And she has a lot of ghost pictures. Um, she's going to probably be sharing in the future because where she works, let me see if it even shows it. We'll nope. Be future one. When we get back. That's right. It's just a taste today. We've been trying to like. This will be a two or three parts. Well, oh, this will be, be like a fifty part. part. This will be a fifty parter. <laughs> <laughs> I might even be having to fill in some parts. You know, when there is no parts yeah, to do. I honestly sure. like the idea that you guys could give some commentary. So if you guys in the future are listening, you know they might be talking about some of this podcast part. Uh, episodes of the Wild West in Colorado, the Wild Wild Slope West. <laughs> um, definitely, we can like chit chat chit chat on other episodes and get you guys excited. But we're just kind of sharing a little bit of everything and all the things that grab us. We're working on some amazing interviews, and hopefully, you guys subscribe, follow along. What do you think so far, guys? Give me your points. What you think? I think it's it's exciting to learn. It's sad about the shortening of the reservations and basically right. how they put their land, but that was done all over America, really. If you think, right? About it. I mean, yeah. think of how New Orleans was. Bad, they were living still, in the tropics. It's like one of many cells <clears throat> that were divided. Right. I mean, hold on. Let me see here. It's terrible. Let me see if there's something visual. Um, as I thought there, I really want to show the we pictures. We will free man. I'm saying right. here we go. Okay. So some of these old buildings, like this is a parachute Creek home. It actually still exists. It's like very much oh rubble. I know. Um, I will be showcasing some of the old, old historic things. Let's just stream through this and see what it says. I want to be shown. I love this. Look at this funniness. Isn't this great? This is what I would imagine in New Orleans playing Mulberry, you know, yeah. ringing around the rosy. This is exactly it. And, I, and this isn't just someone's house down in Parachute. Let's mm. see. And, you know, look at how properly they were dressed in this ruggedness. I think it's quite mute. The main thing I did see, actually, that we should probably touch on here. You know what? I don't think I clicked completely out of it, did I? No. no. History. We're going to do this. Nope. It did not show up. Let's see. Stop sharing. Um, YouTube. Yeah, as soon as we It did home, stop. It did in. stop. It's being a jerk. Wowzers. Well. There's my other video. It's okay. Um, like I said, tomorrow I'll have a lot more queued up too. I mean, the main thing is I just think it's really important for the people who aren't going to take the time. Maybe you're somebody that lives somewhere else and you've lived in this town a long time ago. You know, maybe you have family you know that lived here historically. Yeah, that's researched it. That's right. To hear about people's stories. People lived on that land themselves, you know. There's, that's right. I'm sure there's many legends and stories and history. That's right. Thank you, Dickie's Beer Reviews. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have some guests listening. See? You never we'll know. follow up on some topics. And I really want to look into some of the old buildings that are local, too. So I'm going to start, once the podcast starts rolling with all of the episodes of this series, you know, you guys who are listening in Colorado, you might even learn a little bit about Louisiana, because we always touch a little bit about the, the history we come from. So... Yeah, you, we got to, man. It's just part of it's we, it's part of know, our soul. Our history. I mean, isn't it a saying? What's the saying where you know you can take a a Louisiana out of the city, but you can't take the city out of Louisiana, right? Isn't yeah. that true? I I'm think sure it a is. lot of people feel that way. Right. <laughs> we're gonna but, we're gonna reach up on different topics from different cities and things like that. And 
bring Whether it all forward history or just personal experience so i want to welcome you to parachute a safe place to land which was punned in 1980 but uh yeah it's <laughs> it's a pretty interesting thing to even learn about exxon being so involved with so much of <laughs> the planning of this um area which they then end up t doing a test site on at one point and shooting yeah. off the mountain and there are videos i will be sharing with you guys on that um yeah. i mean pretty i can't imagine the wagons that episodes. came through here no. i'm telling you I'm telling you so these are just some shots and without overwhelming everyone we appreciate you all being here tonight please make sure you hit that follow button give us a thumbs up do tune in we'll be back together all of us on monday is that right yes yes and well, we don't know what we're talking about so you never know too <laughs> stay blessed and be blessed thank you all for joining us it's the weekend it's the weekend go do something fun comment below say hello and until next time have a good night day, wherever you're at bye